cops. Call, call the police. Call the cops. Call the cops. Call the cops. Call the cops. You attack me. Call the cops. I didn't attack the police. I didn't attack you. You attack me. I got it on camera. Call the police right now. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Karen's faced justice. There is an African American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. For this list, we'll be looking at infamous moments featuring people with Karen like attitudes, not just folks named Karen, who received sweet payback for their terrible actions. Have you met a real life Karen? Tell us your tale below. Number 10. Armed Ken and Karen In 2020, as a group of George Floyd protesters went through a private neighborhood in St. Louis, Missouri, all was fine. Well, it was, until Patricia and Mark Thomas McCloskey came out of their house yelling and pointing firearms at the protesters. Who is protecting my wife, my home, my hearth, my livelihood. I was a victim of a mob that came through the gate. Due to their bizarre actions, the two were invited to appear at that year's Republican National Convention, where they criticized the Black Lives Matter movement. Consider this, the Marxist liberal activist leading the mob to our neighborhood stood outside our home with a bullhorn screaming, you can't stop the revolution. In 2021, the McCloskeys pled guilty to misdemeanor offenses. This resulted in fines for the pair and the destruction of their notorious weapons. Mark and Patricia McCloskey seemed happy as they walked out of court downtown today. Both pled guilty to misdemeanor offenses and will pay a nominal fine. However, the Missouri Governor Mike Parson pardons them. In 2022, the Supreme Court of Missouri indefinitely suspended their law licenses, but then gave them a year's probation instead. Number 9. Anti-Mask Karen When the worldwide events kicked in during 2020, most people rallied and helped each other out. But there's always some that ruin it for everyone else. In 2021 in Nebraska, a woman was filmed in a grocery store without a mask on already off to a rough start. When questioned about it by masked shoppers, she patronizingly calls them cute and sheep. It is yet another instance of someone from Arizona at the center of a pandemic-related tirade. And, oh yeah, she dramatically coughs at people while claiming she has allergies. Excuse me, <coughs> I'm coming through. <coughs> After the video went viral, the coughing woman's identity was discovered to be Janine Hoskovic. Her employers at German software company SAP caught wind of what had happened and fired Hoskovic for her disregard for the public's health and safety. Internet investigators also identifying Hoskovic's employer as SAP, which confirmed it was investigating the situation. Later tweeting she no longer works there. Number 8. Starbucks Karen Ah, more anti-mask people. Um, I get shortness of breath, dizziness, and it messes with the heartbeat. Um, and I do have asthma as well. In 2020, Amber Gillis posted an image on Facebook of Starbucks barista Lennon Gutierrez in San Diego, California. Saying, quote, meet Lennon from Starbucks who refused to serve me because I'm not wearing a mask. Next time I will wait for cops and bring a medical exemption. She claimed she was refused service for not wearing a mask and she wasn't pleased. And it didn't have quite the effect she was going for. Instead, a GoFundMe page was created for Gutierrez to give him tips for standing up to Gillis. I wanted to make a $10 tip donation. He made this GoFundMe so other people could tip the barista, and it blew up. Currently, it has over $105,000. Well, Gillis wasn't happy. In 2021, she decided to sue Matt Cohen, who created the GoFundMe page. She claims that a screenshot of her original post included in the fundraiser violated her rights. The suit was dismissed by a judge. However, Gillis is appealing the decision. It was discrimination and, and everybody is okay with it and enabling and rewarding that kind of behavior. Number seven, BBQ Becky. It's a video that launched a thousand memes. In 2018, a group of people were enjoying the nice weather by having a barbecue at Lake Merritt in Oakland, California. Well, not on Jennifer Schultz's watch. Uh, it's illegal to have a charcoal grill in the park here. No, it's not actually. I just yeah, looked at the it map. Is. It says this is a designated barbecue area. She told the group that they couldn't be there for a barbecue and that she apparently owns the park. She doesn't. 
She then proceeds to call the police. She even takes and refuses to give back one person's ID. Yeah, she just took, she just took a card out of my hand so that she could try and get this guy. So you offered it to show it to me. I showed it to you. I didn't say take it out of my hand. You stole the card. Can you please give it back? Because I would like it. Eventually, the cops arrive with Schultz sobbing over the incident. They assessed her for a psychiatric hold but felt she didn't fit the criteria. <laughs> After this event, Oakland residents came together at the site to have a large cookout, probably causing Schult a sleepless night with all those grilled goodies. Number 6. San Fran Karen In San Francisco in 2020, James Wanio was stenciling a BLM message on his own wall. But someone asks for his attention. As he turns, he's greeted with one of the most terrifying expressions a person can have in the shape of Lisa Alexander. I'm asking you if this is your property. Why are you asking? Because well, it's private property. Because it's private property, so sir. So are you defacing private property? Wanilo is then told by her that he shouldn't do that on other people's property. He plays along for a bit until Alexander states she knows the wall isn't his and she knows the person whose it is. And you don't know if I live here or if this is my property. We actually do know. Uh-oh. Wanilo then goads them into calling the cops, which they do. After the video went viral, Alexander apologized for calling the police. Several companies also cut ties with the skincare firm she's CEO of. In a statement, Birchbox condemned her actions and cut ties with her company. Number 5. Q Anon Karen in 2020, with the world struggling with restrictions, Melissa Ryan Lively in Scottsdale, Arizona went to a nearby Target and recorded herself wrecking their display of face masks while yelling, it's over, in reference to the pandemic. When confronted by Target staff, she, for some reason, brings up her $40,000 Rolex. I can't do it because I'm a blonde white woman. I wear a Forty thousand. You see, Lively had fallen prey to the QAnon conspiracy cult. She had fallen down a rabbit hole of misinformation that had slowly filled her with irrational rage. I had really lost all touch with reality. I, it was the worst day of my life. I was having a complete mental break. After the video spread online, she returned home to find her husband had called the police to take her in for a psychiatric evaluation. After her treatment, Lively saw QAnon for what it is and became an advocate against it. I really believe that it's a cult. It operates like a cult in every single way, and people don't realize that they're being consumed by QAnon until it's too late. Number 4. Permit Patty In 2018 in San Francisco, 8-year-old Jordan Rogers was saving up to afford to go to Disneyland. I wanted to help my mom, and I wanted to... I wanted to get the money to go to Disneyland. This entrepreneur did this by selling cold bottled water on the street, right outside her house, for $2. Well, because people hate plucky kids, apparently, Allison Edel decided to intervene. In a video, she is shown calling the cops on Rogers for not having a permit. She calling police on an eight-year-old little girl. You can hide all you want. The whole world gonna see you, boo. Yeah, and um, illegally selling water without a permit? Yeah. On my property. It's not your property. Edel claims the yelling about the water being for sale for hours on end is what drove her to make the harsh decision. After the video was uploaded, Edel was nicknamed Permit Patty by the wonderful internet. Due to the backlash, she was later forced to resign as CEO of Treat Well Health. Which makes cannabis products for dogs. Dispensaries started dropping her products after the video surfaced on social media. Number 3. Non-Flying Senator Sometimes, U.S. Senators like to think of themselves as untouchable. They have violated uh, the Bill of Rights. They have violated inherent rights. Well, in 2021, Alaska State Senator Laura Reimbold learns that this isn't always the case. She was videoed at Juneau International Airport arguing with staff over their mask rules. In a classic Karen move, whenever a member of staff asked her to wear it properly, she wrote down their name for daring to question her authority. No, no, no. Okay, so, and what was your name? Um, my name is Johnson. And 
Later on, Reinball called it mask tyranny. With all the online backlash to the video, Alaska Airlines stated they told Reinbold she's no longer allowed to fly with them. Last year, she referred to Alaska Airlines staff as mask bullies after a confrontation with flight attendants. As a result, she's asked to be excused from legislative sessions until next year since traveling was now a nightmare for her. Whoops. Number two, mother and son Karen. Sometimes, being a Karen can be a family affair. And that was the case in 2021 in Tennessee. Johnny Martinez, who was doing his job checking vehicle permits in a residential building's car park, was accosted by mother and son, Bitsy and Edward Brennan. Oh, the cops. Are... No, all the cops? Yeah, this is not your apartment. This is not my apartment. Yes. Oh, I don't need to tell them anything. Do you have an ID on you? They demanded to see his ID and stated he shouldn't be there. Martinez refuses to go along with their antics. Out of nowhere, Edward attacks Martinez since he's recording on his phone. You're attacking me, seriously? Put that, get that phone out of your mouth. Bitsy then calls the cops. Edward then tries to gaslight the video camera by claiming he never touched Martinez. Right. In the aftermath, Edward was served with an arrest warrant for assault and Bitsy was fired as an investment broker at UBS. They really believe in their mind that they have a right to just stop any person of color. Call the cops. 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 You attack me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Central Park Karen In 2020, Christian Cooper went to watch birds in New York's Central Park, but he spots namesake Amy Cooper with an unleashed dog, which they need to be in that area. So Christian asks her to put a leash on the pup. Instead of realizing her mistake and being sorry, she goes all Sith and refuses. Christian records the scary part, where she announces that she'll call the cops and recklessly claim an African-American man is threatening my life. Please call the cops. I'm gonna tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. When he was doing no such thing. It's also really distressing seeing her yank her dog's collar all over the place. After the video came out, Franklin Templeton Investments fired Amy. She was also charged with several crimes, but those charges were later dropped. She understood the power she wielded at that moment to call police as a white woman on a black man as a scary black man. I'm going to call the police and say an African-American man is. She understood that part of it. She had the wherewithal to understand that. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.